So, Patrick, what did you think of Rosin? I didn't much care for it, but a lot of that is colored by my like of Ring, because, I, like I said, I do think this is a terrible sequel in that it just kind of changes everything, cha- changes, like, the, the Ring... And whether you're, you know, let's forget about the movie for a second. Let's just talk about the premise. So, you know, Japanese, American, there were, I think, Korean ring movies before there were American ones, I think I had heard. One of the best premises to a horror film. Mm-hmm. It's like you watch this tape and then you're you're going to die seven, seven days later. Like it's, it's like one, the tape's creepy, but like there's this like existential dread of like knowing you're going to die. It's a, it's a tiny bit Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. but it's like even more helplessness like there's like nothing you can do seemingly it's a fantastic premise and it's like okay now no we throw diseases in there and rebirth and it's just like uh what is what are we doing it's just not as it's not as simple the original ring is very simple and that's part of what makes it very effective so that definitely affects how i view this film but as a film itself it's not bad but it's hard to get invested in it the movie doesn't have a lot of momentum really at any point there's like good individual scenes but the connective tissue between things just isn't very strong yeah i did i'd agree and i think but but again i'm wondering if like a lot of that is coming from ring being such a, a great movie and we're looking at this and i mean because even it's now, like it's like you're not listening to me i said I, yes that affects how i view it but regardless of that i am the movie doesn't have momentum it just kind of like it's got like one scene oh this is kind of neat and then just like uh, you know and it's like okay they're having sex for some reason and he's destroying tapes and then it's just like oh this is not yeah i agree with that really engaging yeah, and, and it is a lot slower paced than Ring, from what I remember. And Ring was kind of exciting because you had like this little adventure bit where Reiko had to go and find the tape in this cabin, and you know, and then they had to go back out and find the well. Whereas this is just a bunch of people kind of fumbling around in the dark for a light switch, trying to figure out what's going on. Until the very end when you realize, oh, none of it mattered anyways, because this supernatural being has come back. And there was really nothing they could do to stop it. There's a helplessness here, and I mentioned the helplessness in Ring, but that helplessness is like the plot, and and it's like that's that's the emotion that the characters are feeling, and eventually they do find some solution. They kind of like stumble into it because well, they, well, they think they have a solution, and it turns out that's not the solution. Then they kind of stumble into it at the last second and realize, oh, if we force other people to watch the tape, if we make a copy of it, whatever. In this movie. There's a helplessness, but it's like, it's that preordained thing. Have you ever, uh, Jim, have you read the, the famous uh, Robert Langdon, Dan Brown novels? No, but I have seen the movies. I'm actually, I would actually be curious because Inferno is one of the ones they made into a movie. They haven't made all of them into a movie. I don't think they ever made The Lost Symbol into a movie. No. That might be like a, that could be like a Hulu show for all I know. Who, who, who the hell knows nowadays? But like, I know they went out of order because they did uh, Da Vinci Code first. Then they did Angels and Demons. Then they did Inferno because I think they were just ready to make one and Inferno was the most recent book. So it's like, we'll just skip the last symbol, Lost Symbol. It's basically National Treasure anyways. So who cares? <laughs> So I've read those books. I mean, it's been a while because I haven't read literature written for simpletons, you know, since <laughs> since I was about 18 or so. But And by the way, I mean, I say literature written for simpletons. I, I still stand by Angels and Demons as a really enjoyable read. Lost Symbol is decent. I think the other two are lacking. Um, and, and Inferno actually is one of the most frustrating books I have ever read because <laughs> for the majority of it, it was like really good. It was on that Angels and Demons level. This is exciting. Then, the very end, it has such a bullshit twist ending. It makes you just want to throw the book through a window like uh, Bradley Cooper and <laughs> Silver Linings Playbook. It is so stupid. It was like... The entire time they're chasing this guy and he's got this like deadly uh, virus and he's going to unleash it. And then they they find out the very end of the movie or end end, end of the book, excuse me, he's already unleashed it in like the aqueducts of like, uh, I'm assuming Florence, maybe. I don't know. It it, it was all Dante's Inferno. He's already unleashed it. And they find out he like unleashed it several days ago. 
and oh. it's been run- so it's like everything in the book has been pointless because it's already happened and in this case it wasn't actually a deadly virus they learn it was a virus that like made one in three people like infertile or something because it, the whole thing is he wanted to stop overpopulation they thought he wanted to do that through mass murder mm-hmm. and it turns out he has like it's eco-terrorism but also eco-terrorism that doesn't really harm anybody in a weird way which is itself kind of interesting but the whole point was it's a fucking waste of time because the yeah. entire thing was decided before you even started reading and that's a bit what this movie feels like a bit i agree and it's almost too like i'm trying to remember if in rangu if ryuji was like having like a psychic connection with sadako or not because i think it's implied that before he died right like he had set things in motion for this movie and then you also think he wasn't like a dickhead and he wasn't like a weirdo in the first movie. So no. why is he why is he helping? He was just this? like he was a pretty normal guy. He's just ex husband man who cared about his ex wife and child. So now why is he helping like this this ghost murderer? And then the whole science thing with this. Don't mix science with ghosts. That's, no, that's my No, because it's request. never scary. And this is this is listed as a horror movie. I think it's actually on Shutter. It's, it's not and not it's not that it's never scary. It's 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 just it's just it's just not satisfying. Like what makes what makes ghosts scary is the unknown. We don't really know how things work. Like there's you know debate as to if there's even real. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, you ghosts. Yeah, yeah, you saw a ghost. You, know, you have some bullshit story. <laughs> and then other people are like, nah, ghosts or, you know, but like, no, scientific, like, imagine if someone publishes a paper definitively and is like, this is why we experience ghosts. Zach Baggins is off the air immediately. Like, no one oh, has interest in that 100%, anymore, right? Yeah. Ghosts are, are fascinating and they're scary because they are whatever our worst fears about them could be. Mm-hmm. If you make a ghost a disease... It's like, okay, I know what that is. I don't know. I just don't really like that that combination. And then with this movie, too, you make a ghost a disease, but it has, like, no rhyme or reason, you know? Like, if it, if it had been a disease from the get-go, how come Hiroyuki Sonata hadn't hadn't died from smallpox? I mean, I, I know he had, like, a lesion in his throat or something, but... How come he didn't die from smallpox? How come the son didn't die from smallpox? They made it such a point to say, oh, they died from heart attacks. That they're like, oh, but now there's people in this movie who aren't dying of heart attacks. Strange. I don't like how it just totally switches it up. I I guess you're right when, when you say it, it retcons it immediately, the day of, that, mm-hmm. <laughs> that it was released. Yeah, and, and that's I, that's why I don't really love the idea of a retcon. Maybe the book, maybe the book retcons Ringu, maybe. But I want to look at it because I want to be fair to it and, and and not compare it so unfavorably to a far superior film. But like, is this just a different imagination on like the same plot, like a different take on the same plot? Like we have this plot of this videotape going around and people who watch the videotape die. Like, okay, let's go ghost and let's go disease. Mm-hmm. And... The ghost is better, obviously, but and it's better for a few reasons. One, it's there's more focus on the actual tape as a as a viewable object, which I understand why they don't focus too much on that in this. It's just because it's not as we've seen it before. It's not as um, yeah. Yeah. mysterious and intimidating. Like we already know what the tape is before anyone mentions it or finds it or watches it. Although maybe that wouldn't been the case if you saw this on opening day. I don't know. <laughs> imagine, imagine you see it opening day. You see this one before you see Ringu. Yeah, you're like, oh, this one wasn't very good. And then you watch Ring, and it's like, oh, oh, it makes sense. Why do why did they do why did they ruin it though? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I will say, I kind of, as much as I agree with you, shouldn't combine science and ghosts. I do kind of like this disease plot because it takes them a long time to actually figure out what's happening. So you're constantly on it the does, edge of your seat with fair. these characters and you're like what is happening what is killing them if if it isn't the ghost coming out of the tv then how are they dying is there actually a logical explanation to this is it not a spiritual explanation is it reiko's diary is infected with smallpox or something and it, yeah it isn't it's just a s- smallpox curse from a ghost who births people and is gonna make all of society afraid no, the ghost doesn't birth people. The ghost births itself out of a person. That's right, yes. 
which itself is uh, potential maybe to do something interesting with that. Well, you know, was also kind of like a weird part at the very end of this movie when Ando goes up to Ryuji and says, hey, you can bring your son back. And Ryuji says, no, I wouldn't want to bring him up in this a second time. That's not fair to him. I, I don't know about you, Patrick, but I thought, oh, he's expecting society to kind of collapse and fall apart, maybe, you know, or there's going to be some, some difficult years ahead for society, for all of humanity. In in relation to the disease or just in general? In relation to the disease and the, I guess, the, the idea that psychics are going to start popping up all over the place. Yeah, I still don't exactly know what that means, but yeah, well, I, that, I understand what you mean. And again, if this was not connected to Ring, I think it's an interesting enough movie. I don't think it's a fantastic movie. Yeah, it's a it's a better movie if you have never seen Ring. Probably. I mean, well, I maybe maybe I shouldn't phrase it that way because I think you need to see it in just terms of like how we open. I think uh, I I think some knowledge of the tape benefits you as a viewer because the movie doesn't. This movie doesn't super get into it, but (laughs) it's it's a better. Yeah, it's 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 a better movie than it is a sequel, though. Yeah, I agree, and it's fine. I, I I like. I think it's good. I was interested enough in it. It is a little slow, but I think it's yeah. I think it's interesting. And then that last like twenty odd minutes when you have just like twist after twist after twist coming. You know, Mai's body being pulled out of the air intake, Sadako coming back to life, Ryuji having set all of this up. You're like, wow, this Ryuji is great. coming back to life and having set all this up. Like, what? <laughs> one or the other? My goodness. <laughs> no, what a prick. Yeah, do we do we need Ryuji back? Could there have just been something like Ryuji was a secret asshole and he sent you this messages because he wanted to unleash this because he wanted the ghost back? But like he doesn't. We don't need to see him. But yeah, I mean, maybe Hiroyuki Sonata is too big of a star. Maybe in you know in Japan because they didn't obviously anticipate this being an international hit, and it wasn't. I mean, this this is a forgotten sequel that is worth noting. Mm-hmm. As as well remembered as Ring, is this movie is because there's a, there's a Ring too, folks. Like they, they, no one, even even the filmmakers of the Ring movies, <laughs> the Japanese Ring movies, didn't give a shit about this one. You know, after it came out, so yeah. I don't know much about the Japanese Ring series. There's, there's there's a lot more movies than you'd probably expect. What was the movie, Patrick? Oh, The Grudge. That's what I was thinking of. Okay, yeah, Juon in yes. uh, Japan. Did you know there is a versus movie of Sadako and whatever the ghost is in the grudge? <laughs> like a Freddy versus Jason. I, I remember is watching there? that and I kind of enjoyed it, but I also I don't remember much about it. I, and I don't think it was truly like a versus movie. Like I, I think that was like the title. Sadako versus Kadako, I think, is, is, is the ghost in the grudge. You know what? Like I'd that. watch that. <laughs> yeah, I want to say it was decent. I, I think it kind of got horrible reviews, and I wonder if maybe that was expecting a Freddy vs. Jason type movie, and that's really not what it was, at least not that I remember. Well, I think that's all I have to say about Rosin. Rosin gun. Yeah, not great. Disappointing. <laughs>